If you haven't done so yet, make sure that you pause the video and reread, perhaps even reattempt the problem before listening on. The question notes that the vertical axis scale is set by k sub s equals 4 joules. So if we look at this tick mark right here on the vertical axis, we know that that's going to equal 4 joules. But that tick mark is 1, 2, 3, 4 marks up the vertical axis. So if we take 4 joules, divide by 4, then each tick mark is 1 joule, which means as we climb the vertical axis to this maximum right here, we're going to have a kinetic energy equal to 6 joules, because that's 6 tick marks up the vertical axis. So it's important to be able to come up with the value of that maximum kinetic energy. And let's explore that maximum kinetic energy right here, which has a value of 6 joules. As this particle goes back and forth during its oscillation, there's an interconversion of energy. The energy will interconvert between the kinetic energy as well as the elastic potential energy stored in the spring. But importantly, as the energies interconvert, the total energy remains constant. So that black line is a constant horizontal line. It is the complete or total mechanical energy of the oscillator as it travels back and forth. So what we'll do is select a very key point where the kinetic energy is maximized. Right here is where the kinetic energy is maximized. And at that point, we can see that the elastic potential energy is actually equal to zero. So looking at the conservation of energy equation here, the potential energy is going to be zero. And so we would be left at that moment in time with the total mechanical energy equal to the kinetic energy. But remember that the kinetic energy was six joules when it was at its maximum value. So we can see therefore that the total mechanical energy is equal to six joules. Now that was not what the problem was asking for, but it's going to be useful to know the total mechanical energy as we try to answer the question. Let's go back and just revisit the question so we remember what we're looking for. It asks what is the spring constant? So the spring constant is represented as k. Well to get a feel for how we're going to answer that, let's go back to this graph and let's take a look at this location right here. Now at that location, we can see that the kinetic energy value is equal to zero. It's zero joules at that location. So we'll say that the kinetic energy is equal to zero joules. And importantly, we'll notice that the oscillator or the particle has traveled a horizontal distance of 12 centimeters. So that's going to turn out to be the amplitude of the motion. That's the farthest that the particle will travel horizontally is 12 centimeters. And we can divide that by 100 to say that the amplitude is actually 0.12 meters. So let's go back to that energy equation, keeping in mind that at this spot, the kinetic energy is zero joules and the particle has reached its amplitude of 0.12 meters. So we look back at the energy equation, we'll clean it up a little bit here. Here's that energy equation. Again, the kinetic energy is going to be zero at that location right there. So we can simplify the energy equation now at this other point. We can say that the total mechanical energy is equal to the elastic potential energy. But remember, we found the total mechanical energy. It was six joules. And in addition, the elastic potential energy is equal to one half multiplied by the spring constant multiplied by the stretching length or basically the distance by how much the spring has stretched squared. Now from the graph we know the distance that the spring stretched. It was that 0.12 meters. So we're going to plug in that 0.12 meters and now we're going to be able to calculate the spring constant. So you multiply both sides of the equation by 2 so that you can cancel out the 1 half and then divide both sides by the 0.12 squared. And when you do that, you will get a value of approximately 833. And the standard unit of the spring constant is newtons per meter. So this is the correct answer to the question.